Hello, Imanol here. Today in rendering PBR series, I'm going to show you how to export a material from Substance Painter and use it in Octane for Blender from scratch. As you probably know, this can be done automatically with my plugin, but today I'm going to explain how to do it manually. And if after learning the how-to you want to save some time and prefer an automated process, you can always use my plugins, the links are in the description. Anyway, let's open Painter. The most important thing that we need to have is a metal roughness project. In Painter, this is the default behavior, so if you don't have a template selected when you create your project, it will be metal roughness. While we could use a specular glossiness one, that will require a more complex shader network in Octane and it will need more work to get a matching result with what we see in Painter. So for Octane, unless you really need to use a specular glossiness workflow, just avoid it generally. If you have a project already created and want to know which workflow is being used, just go to the texture set settings and check the channels. If you see the base color, metallic, and roughness channels, you are good to go. Now let's export the textures. Usually it will be enough to use the document channels template, but for the sake of thoroughness, let's create our own. For most PBR materials, we'll need at least three maps, base color, roughness, and normal. And if our material combines metal and non-metal parts, also known as the electrics, we might need also a fourth map called metallic. So let's add them. We add an RGB map, name it texture set base color, and select the base color from the input maps. Then a gray map, name it texture set metallic, and select the metallic from input maps. Next, a gray map, name it texture set roughness, and select the roughness from input maps. And finally, an RGB map, name texture set normal. Here's where things can get a little complicated, because we have four different options of normal maps. One in input maps, one in mesh maps, and two in converted maps. The one we want is the normal OpenGL from converted maps. But I will explain quickly what is the difference between the four. The normal in input maps will contain only the normal information defined in the painter layer stack, meaning that if you use mesh maps that you bake from a high poly, that information will not be included. The normal from mesh maps only includes information from the baked high poly, any changes you add in the painter layer stack will not appear. And finally, we have the normal OpenGL and DirectX from the converted maps. Both of them have the layer stack data and the baked maps data, so either one will work. The only difference between the two is that the green channel of the map is inverted, so you can actually switch between OpenGL and DirectX at shader level by flipping the green channel if we need to. We select OpenGL because it's the one that works better with Octane with no extra configurations. Now, before we export the maps, we need to set the correct bit depth for them. If we are using a linear workflow, we need to have a bit depth of 32 and use a format like EXR. That way, we will have values in the image that can be easily converted to the required color space afterwards. In this tutorial, we're going to use a standard sRGB workflow, so most of our maps are going to be 8 bits, with a few exceptions which are going to be at least 16 bits. We need to do this because we want to avoid the stair stepping artifacts in our maps, and the basic rule to know which maps require 16 bits is pretty simple. If a map doesn't represent a color and its information needs precision in the decimal values, then it needs to be 16 bits at least. The most common maps that require this are the normal map, the height map, the displacement map, and the isotropy rotation. The rest usually are fine with 8 bits, so let's set the normal bit depth to 16, and now we can export the textures. Now it's time to open Blender for Octane. The only setup I did to the file was that I imported the same image we use in Painter, also set the render engine to Octane, added the same HDR environment that we are using in Painter, in this case Tomoko Studio, and I set the display device of the color management from sRGB to known. That way we won't see a double gamma application in the viewport. Now let's go to the object context in the shader editor so we can create the material. Let's start from scratch, so I'll delete the current material and I'll create a new one. We have two nodes, the material output and the universal material. The first thing we need to change is the VRDF model from Octane to GGX. That is the model that Painter is using. Then we can start importing our maps. Let's import the first texture, which is base color. We add an image text node, and open the base color texture. Now we need to set the gamma. The rule of thumb for the gamma is that if you are using a linear workflow, the gamma is always 1. But if you are using an sRGB workflow as we're using right now, if the map has color information like base color, emissive, transmissive, or diamond occlusion maps, we set the gamma to 
If it's not color information like the normal height or metallic, the gamma will be 1. Since this map is base color, we set it to 2.2. And we connect the node to the albedo color. Now let's add a new image text node for the roughness. We open the image. Set the gamma to 1, since roughness is not a color data. And connect it to the roughness input. Now it's time to connect the metallic map. As I said before, this map is only necessary if the texture we are using has metallic and the electric parts. If it's only the electric, it will be better to set the metallic value to zero. And if it's only metallic, the value should be one. That way we don't waste RAM memory with extra textures. It is important to notice that if the metal plate has rust or dirt on it, the material is no longer full metallic. It's a common practice to give dirt parts a light gray value. And for those scenarios, we don't need to add a metallic map. In our case, we have metallic and the electric materials, so I will add the map. Let's add the image text node and open the metallic map. Again, this is not color information, so the gamma should be 1. And connect it to the metallic input. And finally, we add the normal map. So we create an image text node. Open the normal texture. Again, set the gamma to 1 and connect it to the normal input. Let's repeat the process for the other two materials. Now, if we check the material and compare it to what we have in Painter, of course, without the displacement for now, it seems like it is working. With the basic maps working, let's see how to use some of the other optional maps that we have available in Substance Painter. Let's begin with the height map. First, we verify that our project has some height channel information. Then, in the Substance Painter template, we add a new gray map. We call it Texture Set Height, and we grab the height data from the input maps. Since this map requires precision, otherwise we'll have a stair stepping problem, we set the bit depth to 16. And we export the textures again. Now in Blender, we add the image text node, open the height texture, And since this is a node color map, we set the gamma to 1. Now we need to create an extra node called Texture Displacement. And this node has two important properties. The first one is the mid-level, which will tell the render if it needs to push the geometry inwards or outwards. Painter uses a high range from 0 to 1, so you need to set the value at 0.5. The second property is the height parameter, which will define how much you wish to push the geometry. This value will depend on the scene scale, the asset size, the material, etc. So you can just play with the value until you find something you like. We connect the image text node to the texture displacement and texture displacement to the displacement input. We set the mid level to 0.5 and adjust the height value in the texture displacement node. Let's add the height map to the rest of the materials. And as we can see in the render, the displacement is working. The next optional map we're going to use is the ambient occlusion map. This map is generally more used in real-time renderers like EV, Toolba, Unity, and Unreal as a way to fake some extra shadows. In non-real-time renderers like Octane, it is not that necessary, but some people add it because they like how the stratarness in the crevices sell the depth of the material. The easier way to add it is by multiplying the ambient occlusion to the base color, so let's do it. First, we need to check that we actually have the ambient occlusion data in our painter project. To ensure we have it, we either need to have an ambient occlusion mesh map or have the ambient occlusion channel in the layer stack. Now let's add the ambient occlusion to our export preset. We create a new gray map set it to texture set AO and grab the ambient occlusion data. Here we have a similar situation as with the normal map. 
we have three ambient occlusion options, one in the input maps, one in the mesh maps, and one in the converted maps. As with the normal map, the AO from the input maps will only export the information on the painter layer stack. The one from the mesh maps will only export the information of the baked mesh maps, and the mixed AO from the converted maps will export both. So we'll select the mixed AO. Now, since this map will be multiplied by the base color, we will treat it as a color map, so it will be 8 bits. We export the textures again, and back in Blender, we add the image text node, open the ambient occlusion texture, and set the gamma to 2.2 because we are treating this map the same way as the base color. We add a multiply text node, and connect the ambient occlusion to the texture 1 and the base color to the texture 2 and the result to the albedo color. As you can see, the difference is minimum, but it is there, so it is up to you if you want to use it. Now let's talk about the emissive map. Again, first we verify that our project has some emissive channel information. Then in the template, we add a new RGB map. We call it texture set emissive and grab the emissive from input maps. This is a map color, so a bit depth of fate is enough. Back in Blender, we need two nodes. The image text node and the texture emission node. In the image text node, we open the emissive map and set the gamma to 2.2 since this is a color map. We connect it to the texture emission node. Now we connect the texture emission to the emission input of the universal material, and as we can see, it is working. If we want to increase the amount of emission, we just need to increase the power value in the texture emission node. Now it is time to check the opacity map. This one is also pretty straightforward. We check if the channel is available in the Painter project. Then I need to export the plate as a gray map and call it texture set opacity. Since this one will be only a non-color data mask, we can use 8 bits and we export the textures again. And in Blender, we add an image text node open the opacity map, set the gamma to 1, we connect the node to the opacity input, and it is working as expected. The final example of the optional maps will be transmissive. While transmissive can be used in many cases, I'll show it this time with a plant. First we check that the transmissive channel is enabled in the Painter project. Now in the export template, we add a new RGB map and name it Texture Set Transmissive. Then we get transmission from the input maps, and since this is a color map, a bits is good enough. We export the textures again, and in Blender we create an image text node. Open the transmissive texture, and set the gamma to 2.2 since this is a color map. Then we connect it to the transmissive input, and now we need to set a transmission type. I found that in most cases the best option is diffuse, as you can see in these results. You can always test the other two options, but 80% of the time diffuse will do the job. Well, that's all for now. In part 2, I'll talk about how to use units with Substance Painter and Octane in Blender. <laughs>